Hi, Steffi here from The Makers. I'm going to show you how to make the wings on the giant moth project here that has um, been created for our Makers box in August 2022. And um, the, the wings is no different from what we've done with butterflies before. The exception is that we're not actually dissolving the water-soluble paper. And what's more, we are felting it onto the canvas fabric that is um, in, in the actual maker's box. So what you need to do first of all is you need to use the template on um, in the instructions, which is actually the pic picture of the tiger moth in that picture is there to help you. I know where to put the spots and the markings, but you need to use that first of all to draw your um, outline of the body onto the fabric that uh, the um, water soluble paper fabric that comes in the box. For this, you will need a pencil. Now, we're not wanting you to add all the details into it because they will be the, the wings will, will be completely covered in the in the background wall first. But I want you to draw around the actual wings and also sort of mark where the body is from what you can see through the paper. Um, this picture has kindly been um, has, uh, provided uh, by the Butterfly Conservation and um, it was taken and we've credited the photographer as well, which is um, Ian Leach. So he has taken this photo of this beautiful giant. Well, it's not a giant, it's only giant because I've blown the um, picture up, but of this garden tiger moth that you can find in British Garden. A beautiful, beautiful, colourful moth. And go around there. Just so that you've got an idea what the absolute outlines are. So I've got the body here in the centre, the top wing separate, um, uh, the bottom wing here separate as well, and then the same on this side. So when I remove this now, you can see this. these are the... Um, the, the outlines and that that is what I'm going to work with now. Now you need um, a relatively large felting mat so that at least one wing shape fits on there and I'm going to follow the instructions um, word for word so that you know exactly that you can follow yours as well and you're on the same literally on the same page. So first of all um, the, the yellow fibers that have come from your um, green and yellow mix, you need to, green, yellow, orange mix, you need to separate some of these um, really, really um, yellow ones from the orange ones. So we don't want to use the orange, we want to use the yellow. And um, and you shorten these a little. The, the way to shorten them is by teasing them. There is another tutorial available for you to look at. So you are actually tearing these fibers shorter and that requires a little bit of strength in your fingers. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut um, one edge so that it's absolutely straight. So the edge is here now straight and that edge is going to be on the tip of the lower wing um, to start with. And then you use your um, felting needle to um, felt it down so that the the wispy straight ends spill out over the um, the line that you've drawn the pencil line um, and you can felt it down onto the wing uh, don't worry how far it reaches into the wing because we're going to um, cover the whole wing in orange in a minute and you may have to repeat this uh, with another bit of yellow so just the yellow. Don't use the um, don't use the orange. We don't want any orange in there, or green for that matter. And shorten it as much as you can, as you've just done a minute ago, and then just cut one end neat. So you don't need to cut a huge amount off. You spread it out so that these um, little hairy ends stick out just a tiny bit over the pencil drawn line. Now whenever you're needle felting, um, 
onto wood, onto water soluble paper into a felting mat. You do need to make sure that you lift your work off regularly. That goes for the whole of the project. So it fastens on, can you see? So you need to lift it off. And, um, and what you can see now is you have these wispy ends slightly sticking out over the um, felted up to the line and the wispy ends sticking out beyond that line. And that's exactly what we want. We want them to be sort of slightly furry and hairy sticking out over the line that you've drawn with a pencil. If you have got a clover tool, it is absolutely brilliant to use on the wings. So um, the five needle tool, perfect also um, on the earth friendly felting mat and on um, the eco wool mat as well. It works there too. And so what you're doing next is you're using, now you're using um, shortened orange fibers. So again, this is the whole thing is the whole um, lower wings and and part of the body you have to shorten fibers um, shorten them because you're now going to color in the um, the remainder of the lower wing and like I said it will work really fast if you have got um, a clover needle felting tool so you're now laying this out you're leaving the or the the um, yellow edge visible so work in fine and small quantities it's always better to add more felt this down so the uh, yellow edge is still visible there is sort of a very smooth transition from the wispy orange onto the yellow felt this down you're filling in that whole lower wing now so that whole sort of rounded triangular shape here and Work close to the yellow um, edge but not don't cover it and all the way into that triangle so I need to mix a little bit more of uh, not mix it I need to separate a little bit more of the orange wool off the yellow and felt it down you will have done all the separating of the fibers before you start your project because you will use some of the um, fibers the, that have got maybe a bit of green contamination in it to um, create the background of your um, canvas fabric so that is the preparation that you do beforehand and you can use more or less um, depending on how you want to um, create it and now I'm going to go into that um, more narrow part of the wing I'm felting it down nice and neat so it fits into the very tip of that wing um, the wings are all created separately and at some point it um, it might look like you've just dismantled um, a moth which um, no moth has been harmed in the process of making this project I'm using my clover tool but if you have got a single needle you can do it too this is a nice to have not a have to have um, and I'm just going to finish it off a little bit more with slightly longer fiber here going along that side of the butterfly. The reason why we don't cut the wings um, off to start with is because we want to make sure that um, we get a nice um, sized surface. If you if you cut them off before, the edges of the water solid paper will shrink down as you're felting it, whereas here they have no choice but they need to stay in the picture. So now the next thing is we're talking still about shortening fibers. You're going to use the uh, the shortened black wool. So you've done this before. So it's uh, it, it, that's what it assumes. You know how to shorten it. So you should maybe have some shortened black wool already there because you've used it on. Um, you know how to shorten the wool, and you're going to make um, a patch on the bottom. Of the wing. Now, to um, this patch will be look will look bigger than what it actually ends up being. But remember, you have got the picture, um, so you should know where to put these patches. Okay, so follow the picture, um, the real um, moss picture, rather than perhaps my um, uh, photos on the um, instructions. And you're felting this down, and you you want it to be fairly um, tidy and it will shrink in size and remember you do have to lift it off as well but it doesn't have to be like um, um, a really uh, precise 
little patch. So nothing is actually that precise if you look in detail at the butterfly, sorry, moth. And then you're going to use that same shortened fiber. And now you're introducing a new fiber, which is the um, this really fine merino. And you're going to mix it. And by mixing it, you're also shortening it at the same time, you're creating a new color, which is going to be gray. So you want a um, quite a dark gray, but it needs to be um, different from the black. So you do need to tell that it's um, um, a different color to the black. So you want a dark gray, but um, not, not too dark, and you don't want it to be too light. So it's the sort of thing that you almost can't notice that it's different, and different until you look close up. Um, it's the kind of when you study the, the, the moth, at first you don't really sort of take it in and then you look a bit closer and you see, oh, that's actually a, sl a slightly lighter inside. And then you're um, adding that into the black, but not covering the black altogether. So make sure that it has got um, a bit of a black frame still showing. Yeah, and you're pushing the fiber through to the other side. So there's a bit of um, gray inside now, but the black is, is, is still showing too. Now you're going to do this for the whole of the wing. And when you've done the whole of the wing, now I haven't, I haven't added the other patches, but when you have done this, you're going to cut the wing off the main water soluble piece, but you are going to leave the rounded edge at the moment uncut. Okay, so you're cutting the wing off. Imagine that had all the spots on it already. Um, and the reason why you're doing this is because you now need to cut very precisely around the base of the wing without cutting the whisper fibers off. And it's easier if you do this from the other side. So um, it's easier to handle it. So you're going to use your scissors and you're going to cut behind. Um, the um, the wispy ends around the shape because you should just be able to see the pencil drawing still so that you've got a very neat butterfly uh, oh, I keep saying butterfly moth wing it's the color of a butterfly it's so beautiful and um, and imagine that all the spots were on there already I'm just not going to do that because it will take too long to do that now and then you do two exactly the same basically and um, and um, you attach every single wing separately onto the um, the moth once um, once you're ready to attach the wings. So therefore, it makes the whole thing whole again. But the wings will be separate. So, like I say, at some point, it will look as if you've taken um, as if you've taken a moth apart. But you're actually creating it. And um, and there are such vibrant colors. They will make you happy just needle felting them. They're such summery vibrant colors. Beautiful to work with, the combination of the yellow and the orange and then add the black and the gray into it. And then later you uh, do, 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 do the patterns for the top wings as well. So I hope this has helped you um, with your moth um, and uh, you get off to a good start. And um, again, I look forward to seeing the finished results and these skills are transferable to other um, butterflies and moths, of course. Okay, thank you. Bye.